We are looking today at practicing confidence. Is confidence a skill? And if so, what can we do to get really good at self-confidence? How is it we can do some amazing and sometimes unexplainable things? Like heal our own bodies by the power of our thought. Mother's intuition, the law of attraction. Can we really tap into our subconscious mind? Can we really create our own realities? It begs the question, are we novice gods? Hey, thank you so much for joining me on this documentary series. Are we novice gods? Are we gods in training? Do we have more power within us that we don't normally tap into? And if so, how do we tap into that to create the lives that we want, to create lives of abundance, lives of peace, life, you know, a life where you are truly happy with who you are and what you're about and that you are living as the fullest expression of yourself. Now, one thing that you truly need to have if you're going to live as the fullest expression of yourself is confidence, right? You know, if you don't have confidence, if you lack self-confidence, you don't trust who you are, you don't trust what you're about, and often you don't know. You know, you're not sure what you're here for, and there's like doubt and discouragement, and it's easy to get, you know, just kind of bogged down in the the mucky muck stuff of the day. But if you have confidence, if you have clarity on who you are, what your purpose is, what your identity, what you're about, where you're going, boy, you can accomplish so much. So today we are going to talk about practicing confidence and I'd like to share seven exercises that you can do so that you can boost your confidence starting today. Okay, so the first thing is you need to start with your belief. And what I would recommend here is that you look at your belief about yourself and your confidence, you know, and, and who you are. You know, a lot of times we, we grow up with the belief system that is handed to us. Uh, and I don't mean like, you know, like what religion you came from, but I mean, you know, who your parents tell you are, uh, who your teachers tell you you are, you know, and, and a lot of times we have these self-limiting thoughts where you're told you can't do math or you're not very smart or you know your brain doesn't work like normal people or you're only creative you can't do math things so anyway all of these things kind of start to limit who we believe we are what we believe we can do and the more limits we allow into our minds into our subconscious that's kind of what we start to experience in life so one thing that I want you to do each day, you know, for, anyway, this is an opportunity for you. I don't want you to feel like there's any shoulds here. These are possibilities, and I want to open your mind to it, because if you try things out, if you, if you um, experiment with a few things, you're going to find a few things that work, and when things start to work, you get out of the situation that you're in. And if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling trapped, if you're feeling hopeless, which happens a lot and I've been there, let's get you some hope. Let's get you some momentum. Let's help you focus on your belief and change the beliefs that are not helping you. So the very first step is practice the belief systems that you would like. So you can practice by saying affirmations. I like to call them my favorite truths. And so you can write out some statements about yourself, such as, I am confident, I present myself well, people like me, uh, I have valuable things to contribute. As you use some of these truths and share them with other people, well, I'm sorry, share them with yourself and reaffirm those stories and those beliefs to yourself over and over again through repetition and consistency, you'll be able to start to adopt these new beliefs. And these beliefs will serve you and will help you. So as you focus on your beliefs, again, this is step number one, Figure out which beliefs have just become automatic and which ones are not serving you. And those you want to set aside and you want to start some deliberate intentional beliefs that are constructive, that help you grow and expand and be a larger, uh, more purposeful version of yourself. Hope that makes sense to you. So um, that is the first step on practicing confidence is changing just your belief system that you can actually change. You can actually be the kind of person that you want. Okay, now step number two, well, exercise number two, is practice eye contact, okay? 
I want you to stare at people just like this. Make sure you keep your eyes really big and just stare them down. Okay, I'm kidding, of course, but there's something to be said about eye contact. You know, about looking at somebody, genuinely connecting with them and their soul, paying attention to them, being fully present when you're there, that you are looking at them, you are interested. And as you start practicing these kinds of things, practicing these exercises, you will build your confidence. Because you know what? And actually, here's an exercise that you might want to start out with. Before you take this exercise out into the world, start with yourself. Start with your bathroom mirror. And as you're brushing your teeth, Stare at yourself, and I don't mean stare, sorry, I was teasing about that part before. But look yourself in the eye and make genuine eye contact. And as you're doing that, I hope that you think these thoughts, I like you, I like who you are, I forgive you, and I accept, I fully accept who you are. And as you look at yourself in the mirror with eye contact, you will start to kind of change your perceptions about yourself to more favorable things. But as you practice that, because one of the things that I find is people that have low self-confidence and low self-esteem have a hard time connecting with people and, 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 and being there with them and, and looking at them in the eyes. And you know what? They have a hard time with themselves too. So if you can be okay with yourself, if you can like who you are and look at yourself and have good eye contact in the mirror, that will help you practice so that when you go out into the world, big scary world and start talking to people, if you can be um, engaged with them and give them good eye contact, uh, that's going to help build your confidence. Now, along with eye contact, we're going to roll right into uh, tip number three, exercise number three here, is that you want to be fully present with whoever you're with. Oh, I can't tell you how frustrated I get when I see people that are sitting together at a table and both of them are on their phones. Or, you know, when you get around people and they're so disconnected, you know, they, uh, they're not here. They're not present. They're not where you're at. You know, you'll go up and you'll shake somebody's hand and they'll be looking off in some other direction rather than paying attention to you and what you have to say. If you want to gain some self-confidence, learn to be fully present. Be in the moment. Soak it in. Be right here and enjoy who you're with and, uh, and enjoy yourself as you're with them. So anyway, that's an exercise that you can do. You know that when somebody is talking, you're fully listening to them. You're engaged with them. You are thinking about what they have to say. You're pondering about that. You're not thinking about what am I going to say next, but you're just fully present, enjoying the moment. So that is exercise number three. Now, exercise number four is very similar to this. It is about being genuinely interested. So as you know, again, this is an exercise that you can do out in the wild when you're around people. Uh, ask them questions. Become interested in what their, what their ideas are, what their thoughts are, what their experience is. And as you do this and you practice eye contact and you nod and you're engaged in kind of some positive, uh, positive body language and you are fully present and if you are genuinely interested in them, that's going to help boost your self-confidence because you're going to start to realize I am being completely true to them right now. I'm fully present. I'm listening to them. I'm paying attention. I'm interested and I'm learning something from them because everybody has something to share. And as we connect with them, it just oh, changes our lives as we have these broader connections that help uh, just really help us become more of who we are. Does that make sense? You know, that you, you really become true to you and you're living in alignment with that. Now, step number, I don't know, what are we at, four? Step number four is get rid of the negative chatter. You know, if you want to boost confidence, you got to not have two battlefronts. And two battlefronts is when you're, you know, having the battle from outside, but you're also having this internal battle. And so often we are our own worst enemies because we're beating ourselves up and we're just involved in this negative chatter, this uh, monkey chatter, as I've heard it called, uh, where you're putting yourself down and you're criticizing yourself. 
Now, honestly, I've got to tell you, this is something I battle all the time because I don't feel like I'm very eloquent and I stumble over my words. And so I become very aware of that. But you know what? That doesn't serve me to have this negative chatter inside telling me all the things I'm doing wrong and not paying attention to the things I might be doing right. So if you are in the same situation, if you beat yourself up, if you are listening to that negative inner chatter, I want you to stop it. I want you to focus on the good things that you're doing and recognize that when that negative inner chatter comes, it is not going to serve you well. And so don't listen to it. Change the channel, switch it out so that you are not listening to that negative chatter anymore. Now, step number six is to remember your strengths and recognize your wins. We don't do this often enough. You know, you want to boost your confidence? Pay attention to when you've had confidence. Pay attention to when you've been successful, when you've done some good things, when you've been honorable. Those times will help boost your confidence because you'll remember, okay, you have the evidence that shows it worked then or I was true then. You know, you were in that position at that time. But as you are aware and conscious of your wins and your strengths and you play to those, I mean, that's really going to serve you well. And so often, you know, we don't do that. So play to your strengths. Um, what I like to do is I like to write these things down. I like to keep lists of times I've had prayers answered, uh, times when I've had tender mercies, and times when I've had success on the things that I've been creating. It's a great suggestion for you. Again, an, an excellent exercise that you can do at the end of each day before you go to bed you can write down three fortunate things that happened to you and a lot of times you'll find that you created a win that day that you did something that uh, that was really tremendous and that moves your life forward now the seventh step is to live in alignment with who you truly are that's a little trickier this one this exercise is about finding out who you are, what you're about, what your core values are. I like to list three values each day. I have five that come top of mind. For me, it's God, family, uh, personal development, contribution, and fun. So those are my top five priorities. And each day I like to list them out and I like to, you know, take maybe three and say, okay, what am I going to do today to prove that they are priorities? When you start doing that, when you are starting to actually make progress in things that are valuable and meaningful to you, you are going to be living in alignment with who you are. And once you start feeling that you're in alignment with who you are, that you're not chasing around all these distractions, that you're not following someone else's program, you're going to find that you have much more confidence, much more, you know, a higher self-esteem, a higher sense of purpose, and an identity that truly resonates with you. Getting in alignment is super key. So I just want to share those seven exercises for practicing confidence. Confidence is a skill. It's not something that you have to be born with. It's not something that uh, <clears throat> only the lucky people get. You can develop this. You can develop it from where you're at right now and you can become the true best fullest version of yourself because you are a God in training. You're a novice God. You have divine DNA and you have the ability to grow up to be absolutely amazing. I hope this helps, gives you some ideas, and uh, if you'd like more ideas, visit me at scottwilhite.com. I've got lots of tools and uh, resources that can help you be the best full version of yourself. Hey friends, want to get rid of stress, anxiety, and worry? Ready to use some of your inner creation powers? Visit scottwilhite.com and join me for a web class. If you do it soon, I'll give you a free planner.